Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new, I hope you're all doing well. These are the books I read in August, let's talk about them. I am in my cosy jumper today, just chilling out on my lunch break, filming this video for you guys because I had a late night last night in London and I just need to chill out and be cosy because I'm very very tired, I got back very very late. So it's going to be a chill vibe today talking about all the books I read in August. August wasn't my best reading month this year and when I look back at my August TBR and I set myself the challenge of doing my prompt to prompt challenge again for the second time, I had high hopes that the reason I read so much in April was because I did prompt to prompt and therefore prompt to prompt was the reason I read so much. That was not the case. I just clearly had a really, really good reading month in April, which is fine. Like I still love doing prompt to prompt and I'll definitely bring it back again because August was in a complete fail. But we just now know that the reason I read so much in April was because Mark was playing video games a lot more than he was in other months. Um, and therefore when he plays a lot of video games, he gets really reinvested in playing a specific video game. Then I can read more because he's so preoccupied and we do kind of like a lot of individual interests but together on the sofa so I read a lot, Mark plays video games a lot, match made in heaven yes um, and I just end up reading a lot but August was not that case. Um, I read a total of five books in the month of August which isn't horrendous there's definitely a five star in there as well so if I held up that stack and you recognise what my five star was yay go you um, but I did have a five star and I also just had some mediocre books as well so it's a very kind of average month in terms of reading with a little bit of a high with a five star so without further ado let's get into the stats so like i said in august i read a total of five books ah sorry if the camera or myself has changed angle um i started doing my stats and realized i hadn't figured out my stats yet so this video is going to be chaosis <laughs> chaosis <laughs> this video is going to be chaotic slash chaos um <laughs> Let's start again. I read a total of five books in a month of August and these are my stats. I read 1,892 pages across all five books. My ratings, like I said previously, weren't that great. I read three three stars, one four star and one five star. I had two DNFs and I'm really sad about these DNFs because one was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, a book that I've been wanting to read for absolute years. And I brought the audiobook on Audible to try and help me get through it. I got about 40 pages into it and I was I couldn't follow along with it. I found the writing style really difficult to follow along with. And I just don't think I'm vibing with this book. I It's still on my TBR. I still want to give it a go. Maybe it's wrong time, right book. Maybe it's just wrong time, wrong book. I don't know, but I'm so hesitant to kind of like unhaul it. Next book I DNF was Love Strike by Laura Jane Williams. This purely was wrong book, kind of hitting a slump sort of situation. It's one of my favorite authors. It's another kind of romance contemporary and I just wasn't vibing with it at that time. I was going through a lot of life hurdles during the month of August and I just tried to read that book during the wrong time of my life. Um, so I will go back to that book. But yeah, those were my two DNFs in August. All the books I read this month were physical books because I can hold them up, yay. Although this one was brought halfway through the month after starting it as an ebook on my library app. But three of those books were also sent along to with the physical book with the audio book. So a bit of mixed media going on. Three books were off my physical TBR. One was a reread. And like I said, one was brought halfway through the year. So kind of like four physical, one book I've already read. Four of them were contemporaries and one was romance and then four of them were adult and one of them being a YA. Those books were I Heart London by Lindsay Kelk, The Year After You by Nina DePass, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston and Tomorrow 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 by Gabrielle Zevin. So the month of August started off on the wrong foot anyway because I came down with a shitty cold and hit my period at the same time so I wanted a book that I could just kind of like be familiar with so I did my next reread of the I Heart series so I read I Heart London I'm currently rereading this series for the first time I absolutely love this series I originally read it as an audiobook kind of big collection I just listened to all the audiobooks and absolutely fell in love with this whole series and the characters and the story and the plot and when I finally got my hands on the entire series as physical books I knew I had to reread them and tab them up and that's what I've slowly been doing and getting myself through them all again and this was the fifth book in the installment I can't really say much about this book but it basically follows Angela as she has to come home for her mother's 60th birthday it's her first time back in the UK back home visiting her family and friends from the UK since she kind of jetted off to New York to start a new life it takes ages for her to kind of like adapt and 
I did really enjoy this book. I gave it a four star. Um, I cannot wait to read the next one, which is on my September TBR. I just love Angela so much as a main character. She's hilarious. I love Lindsay Kirk's writing. I love all the characters. I think the parents, the dad especially is so funny, but the mum is like annoyingly funny. And Alex is chef's kiss, such a cute boyfriend. And her friend Jenny and Louise. Mm, I just love this entire universe so much. And I cannot wait to finish rereading the series for the first time. And no doubt being the first time of many. This was when Prompt to Prompt was going well and I got the prompt of TBR Vet so I finally picked up The Year After You by Nina De Pass. I've been putting this book off for ages now because it's a YA and I just don't really read YA if you've been following my stats across the year. I read predominantly adult kind of TBR now and only the only kind of YA books I read are either from authors I know and love or have been on my TBR for ages and I just need to get around to reading them and get them off my physical TBR. The latter is the case for this book. I was initially intrigued by this book because I thought it was more of a thriller. It's definitely a contemporary YA book. It basically follows our main character, Kara, whose mother ships her off to the Swiss Alps to go to a boarding school because Kara's dealt with something really difficult in her life and she's really kind of shut off. She's going to a therapist, she has depression. And as a reader, you don't know kind of what's happened to her and you follow that journey of her trying to kind of regain herself um, as she goes to this boarding school and kind of like meets new friends and this boarding school is called the Hope School and it basically is a last chance for people who deal with a lot of different things especially grief and everyone's kind of like in the same boat so she makes some really close friends who are also dealing with the same thing and it allows her to open up. I thought this book explored grief in a really good way for YA. I would have loved some more kind of character development but it is a YA so therefore I kind of have to expect that there's not going to be as much in-depth kind of exploration and background to these characters because it's a YA and I'm so used to reading adult now with like those kind of like more in-depth themes and topics that it's kind of like jarring to read a YA but it's because it's a YA so I did enjoy the discussions on grief in this book I just wish there's a little bit more depth there was a good kind of level amount of intrigue throughout this book as you the reader was trying to discover what Kara's kind of past was um, as well as the side characters you were also trying to figure out what the side characters what secrets they were holding close to their hearts as well, whilst Kara is also trying to kind of like reinvent herself. But with typical YA these days, I would have enjoyed it more if I'd read it when I was a lot younger. But overall, I gave it three stars, thought it was enjoyable, definitely would recommend to, to people who read a lot more YA. I definitely think the discussions are worth it in this book. Enjoyed it for what it's worth, but I am going to unhaul it. That's what I'm going to start doing in these kind of wrap ups now. I'm going to let you know the books I've read during the month, whether I'm going to unhaul them or keep them on my shelves. So obviously I'm keeping this one on my shelves forever um, and I'm going to be unhauling The Year After You by Nina De Pass. Next book and the last book I kind of read for Prompt to Prompt was Daisy Jones and the Six and this was to read a book with... It was either prompt read a name, a book with a name and a title or read a book to movie adaptation and obviously this is a TV show so I counted it. Um, I was not excited to read this book because it's always one of those Taylor Jenkins read books I wasn't that excited about which is why I only brought it this year because I was never really inclined to read it compared to some of her other books um however then a tv show came out and everyone was like raving about it and I was like I just love her writing style so I'm going to give it a go and yes the writing style was good but without the audiobook how the hell do you follow along with this book? There are so many characters. The characters are barely ever kind of named. So you have to really know each kind of side plot for these characters to know who's talking. This book basically is written in an interview style, but without the questions and the each of the cast of this band answers the questions um, and kind of it tells their story of how the band in the 70s and 80s how they came together and kind of how they kind of broke up by the end of it. And I enjoyed the plot. I really liked the ending. But without the audiobook, I would not have got through this book because I just thought it was so difficult to actually get myself to understand what was going on. I think I read the physical book without the audiobook for about 60, 70 pages and I just, I was so lost. And then as soon as I picked up the audiobook and it being a multicast and every single kind of character had a different voice, it was, it just brought the story to life. And if you are planning on reading this book, I wouldn't even try with the physical. I would try and try and try to get your hands on an audiobook copy because it just really brings the story to life. And I do want to read the TV show, but also do I want to? I don't know. I enjoyed this book, but I think it's so overhyped. Unpopular opinion, yes, but I think kind of true. I gave this book a three stars. And if you couldn't guess, I then read my five star book of the month. This was when I realized prompt to prompt was not happening. I just needed to read what I was in the mood for. This was when I was like in my real depth of kind of like iffy mental health and just needing to like 
focus on the present and kind of just get through each day and I just needed an easy book that I knew I was going to fly through and I read this book in 24 hours because it was a seven year slip by Ashley Polston. If you didn't know and you haven't been following my channel for this entire year, I read The Dead Romantics very early on this year and absolutely loved it. It became my favourite book of the year so far, I gave it five stars. So when this author was releasing something new in this year, I knew I had to get my hands on it. Finally picked up a physical copy... Back in July, I want to say, I did a vlog where I went bookshopping with Emily and that's when I picked it up. So I'll link that up above and down below if you're interested in watching it. Oh my god, this book did not disappoint. I absolutely love it when you read a debut book from an author. Not that... I always want to say The Dead Romantics is the debut book for Ashley Poston, but it's not. She has written like an entire YA trilogy, but I think The Dead Romantics really put her name on the map. So I keep saying it's a debut, but it's not. Um, <laughs> but I absolutely loved it when it... I finally read it as an audio book and then brought a physical copy of it after I read the audio book. So I was so excited and it was so nice to have a five star of Dead Romantics and this one not disappoint and it be just as good. I love this book so much. What I love about what Ashley Poston does most in these adult romances that she's currently writing is that she manages to intertwine a normal world with a fantasy kind of like paranormal sci-fi-esque kind of world. This book basically follows a time at travelling apartment and when I heard that, I was so worried that I wasn't going to enjoy Ashley Poston's next book because I don't do kind of like the fantastical side of fiction. I like realistic fiction. That's why I read contemporary. That's why I, why I read romances. I like to stick to the real world. However, she intertwines different kind of elements of books so well. Yes, this is a romance, but it basically follows our main character, Clementine. Cute name. And the love interest calls her Lemon. Um, and she inherits her auntie's apartment when her auntie unfortunately passes away um, and the apartment for her has always brought her like really core memories of her auntie and so therefore when, when she inherits it from her auntie when she passes away she ends up moving into that apartment when she was younger her aunt used to say that it was magical and nothing ever magical ever happened to Clementine when she was growing up so when she finally goes to live in there um, and something magical happens to her because she meets a man in her apartment who was from seven years ago and the apartment has finally kind of like shown itself it's been magical for Clementine and she, it's thrown herself in the past seven years ago and so it's kind of like a close proximity sort of romance because you only ever get those two being kind of like romantic and getting to know each other in the apartment, him from seven years ago and Clementine present day, and then their kind of paths interlink in the present day as well, and oh my god, it's such a cute romance. Ah, just read it for the characters and the plot and the romance and the cute squealy moments and just mm, chef's kiss, it was five stars, I read it in 24 hours and absolutely devoured it. Listened along to the audiobook for this one, 100% will be keeping in my collection, I cannot wait to reorganise my bookshelves, video coming soon and place this one in my little collection of romances multicolored um down there at the back so yeah absolutely adored this book highly highly recommend it if you haven't read it if you've read the dead romantics i highly highly recommend it because i think you're gonna love it just as much yes <laughs> And then I hit like a week and a half slump, which is why I haven't read as much as I wanted to in August. And the final book I managed to finish on the 31st, no, on the 30th, sorry, I didn't read anything yesterday because I was out in London for my sister's birthday, hence why I'm so tired today. Um, but this video has really like boosted my mood, which is good, uh, if you couldn't tell. The last book I finished was the book club pick for my local book club that I go to in person every month. And our pick this month was Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow by Gabrielle, Gabrielle, blah, 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 words. Gabrielle, <laughs> Gabrielle Zevin. <laughs> Talk slower, Rachel. Um, I would never have picked this up if it wasn't for the book club. I always kind of thought maybe it would be something I enjoyed, but I don't really care for it. Like, I don't think I want to put my time and effort into reading it because it's quite a chunky book. Um, but when it came up as a book club, I managed to get the ebook from my library and I got about 150 pages in and I really enjoyed it and I was like, I know, me personally, I enjoy books more if I read them as a physical copy than I do via an ebook. So I took the plunge, I saw this book in Tesco for £5, so I picked it up on Club Card. Um, and I definitely think it was worth me getting the physical copy for me to read. I enjoyed this book, but I, once again, don't think it's worth the hype. <laughs> this was another three star for me, maybe like a 3.5. I enjoyed this book, I definitely enjoyed... The friendship and I think what pulled me along in this book was the plot which is not usually the case I'm usually a much more of a character driven person and um, so that kind of says something about the book if you didn't know this book basically follows two main characters Sadie and Sam and they grow up together in a hospital Sam has unfortunately been in a car crash with his mum and he's really really badly injured his foot and he's in hospital quite a lot to try and get his foot kind of like 
back on track he has a lot of rods in his foot he's kind of really dealing with like the pain and kind of like dealing with pain medication um so he's in hospital a lot and Sadie's sister unfortunately Alice is dealing with cancer um so Sadie is in the hospital a lot just looking after her sister and being with her sister and being with her parents so one day when the nurses ask Sadie if she can go look after Sam in the kind of playroom because Sam hasn't kind of spoken to anyone in ages and they just want like someone similar to his age kind of like check up on him and kind of be friends with him Sadie kind of takes this on as some sort of kind of like competition with herself because it counts as community hours for her and she gets a little like tally sheet and she gets really happy every time her hours kind of like add up so she becomes friends with Sam and they play loads and loads of video games together um, across both of their time in hospital Sadie being a visitor and Sam being an inpatient um, and then one day Sam kind of gets hold of the fact that Sadie was doing it all for community hours at the beginning not as kind of like time went on uh, they did become really good friends so Sam holds this grudge for years and then the story kind of really picks up when Sam and Sadie reconnect with each other at university because they bump into each other on the London, not London Underground, just on a tube station and they decide to create video games together for the rest of their lives and you follow the ups and downs of best friends becoming business partners and creating this video game company that kind of really explodes and becomes popular um, and you also have a really good character in there called Marks which is Sam's best friend who Sam lives with during university and Marks kind of helps Sam deal with his injury and deal with his disability and I really liked the character dynamics between the three characters. Sadie did really, really annoy me at times. I thought she was very selfish. I thought she, her actions sometimes did not kind of, they were very unfair to the other characters and they weren't needed. But overall, what drew me and kept me reading was the plot. I was just naturally interested in their story and what they got up to. And I did enjoy this book. I definitely think it's about 50 pages too long. It's just under 500 pages. I think it could have been like a 420 page book and it'd be like a good amount. And there were some chapters where I was reading being like, I don't know what the point of this section is, but I'm hoping by the end there's some sort of like reveal or some sort of like connection back to those chapters. That I didn't really know what's going on. And there wasn't so I definitely feel like those chapters and those pages didn't weren't needed and therefore the book could have been shorter and kind of more fast paced rather than having some like dips in action but overall enjoyed it 3.5 stars the highest three star book I rated this month and those are all the books I read in August so as a recap I Heart London four stars will keep in my collection The Year After You three stars unhauling Daisy Jones and the Six, three stars, unhauling. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston, five stars, keeping for sure. And then Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, 3.5 stars, keeping for now. I will see how much I think about it over the next couple of months. It may be an unhaul, it may be not. This is in like the maybe pile. So these are all the books I read in August. I'm pretty chuffed with the amount I had to deal with in August, how much I read. And there were there was one standout, so I can't complain too much. I still read a new favorite book of mine, uh, which will probably make the best books of the year list. So it isn't too shabby. Let me know which books you read in the month of August. I would love to know. Have you read any of the same books? Let me know your thoughts down below. Spoiler free, of course. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below to see future content from me. I do anything from monthly TBRs, monthly wrap-ups, weekly reading vlogs, and any other bookish content that you can think of. I will usually have it on this channel, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Without further ado, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.